team in the league. I mean, they beat SMU. He's number two right now. Three-point loss at USF. They had an overtime loss at Tulane. We know how good they're playing this year. So here's the starting five from Memphis. How about the return of Williams, Mark, over the last five games? Been huge for them. He's a spiritual leader for this team. He draws attention from opposing defenses, and he's a really good compliment to Jalen Duren on the offensive glass, and they just share the ball so well. There he is on the old glass. Second offensive rebound already for the Tigers here. Here's a three ball. Landers Nolly. That is no good. Another offensive board, and throwing it down is Duren. It all started with DeAndre Williams. He brings energy to the offensive glass, and that seems to wear off on Jalen Duren. Duren just really effective attacking the rim over the last seven games. Now, seven plus games. Starting five for the Owls here. Sixth different starting lineup this season. Their, their main 11 guys, they played 11 guys throughout the season because of uh, Battle injured after game seven out for a while here. Every in Memphis tonight in the American. All right, Mark, give me a little bit of an indication uh, score-wise what you think we might have here tonight with the way these two teams play defense, right? What do you have? Well, lower the score, that favors Temple. Higher the score, that obviously favors the Memphis Tigers. They love to get up and down and get into turnover mode and go dunk it on people. Our officials tonight, Terry Oglesby, Chuck Jones, and Burt Smith here in Memphis. Tigers with Duran going to work. And an offensive rebound pulled home by DeAndre Williams. Yeah, Dern and Williams are just a great one-two punch inside. Number 12 right there, number two for Memphis. Turnover. Here comes Damian Dunn. He goes right to the hole, and he is fouled. And Damian Dunn, who missed a couple of games, came back last game with 15 points and a win on the road at Cincinnati. I mean, this is a Temple team under head coach Aaron McKee here. Mark, who has really done a nice job of pulling these guys together, right? I mean, they won at home against SMU last week without Dunn, Forrester, and Williams, as you see what Dunn's done, and then they go and they win on the road at Cincinnati. And remember, they didn't have Caleb Battle in that game against SMU either. Now, SMU didn't have Kendrick Davis, but literally four Temple starters not available in that game against SMU, and Temple figured out a way to win. Aaron McKee, one of my candidates, for coach of the year in the American. You look at some of the losses that Temple's had this year. They lost to Houston by only five points, right? The number one team in the league. I mean, they beat SMU. He's number two right now. Three-point loss at USF. They had an overtime loss at Tulane. We know how good they're playing this year, so... Here's the starting five from Memphis. How about the return of Williams, Mark, over the last five games? Been huge for them. He's a spiritual leader for this team. He draws attention from opposing defenses, and he's a really good compliment to Jalen Duren on the offensive glass, and they just share the ball so well. There he is on the old glass. Second offensive rebound already for the Tigers here. Here's a three ball. Landers Nolly. That is no good. Another offensive board, and throwing it down is Duren. It all started with DeAndre Williams. He brings energy to the offensive glass, and that seems to wear off on Jalen Duren. Duren just really effective attacking the rim over the last seven games. Now, seven plus games. Starting five for the Owls here. Sixth different starting lineup this season. Their, their main 11 guys, they played 11 guys throughout the season because of uh, Battle injured after game seven out for a while here. Every one of those 11, except for one, has started at least one game. Offensive rebound for the Owls here. That was by Arashma Parks. Three-pointer no good by Strickland. And Ty Strickland went for 27 in that win versus SMU. Followed that up with 11 points in the last game against Cincinnati. Oh, count this basket. And a foul as Williams scores it. Memphis is just pounding the ball inside. We talked about Duran and Williams. They're the best one-two punch in the post in the American. Both supremely confident, talented, and you go to one or the other and establish your down low game. DeAndre Williams brings so much energy to this team, Mike. Transfer to Evansville, the senior for this group, originally from Houston, Texas. Talked about the injury, came back February 5th. 
Just a lot of time, and they've won four of the last five since his return. They had six wins in a row to that last game and the loss on the road at SMU. What did you think about that game over this past weekend, Mark, from Memphis there at SMU? Huge win. For, you know, you look at SMU and what Tim Jankovic has done. I mean, he's been a guy that has figured out how to prepare, how to get better, and then how to come back from a loss. And now Memphis coming back from a loss. Will they do the same thing tonight? SMU, obviously, they bounce back. And now can, can we see Memphis bounce back as well? Petty Hardaway, when we talked to him today, Mark, right? I mean, you could just feel a different Penny Hardaway now than you did a month ago, right, in mid-January. Seems like he's having so much more fun right now. When he'll do that to you, right? Well, it certainly does, but, but he's a guy that has gone through the ringer here throughout the early season where he had a team that, frankly, didn't like each other. I'm not sure he liked them either. And, but they've overcome that. Somehow they've pulled it together since they've gotten healthy. That's been the big thing for Memphis. When they were losing games, they weren't completely healthy. Now, they're as healthy as they've been all season. There's that high-low again, down low to Duren. Ball got blocked inside, and Memphis gets it back, and it's Quinones that scores it. And that's going to be a hold and a foul on Quinones. So he has won, Williams has won, and Nolly has won here to start for the Tigers in this first half. And so far, basket's hard to come by. And we expected that in this game, two elite yep. defensive teams, both in the top 25 in the country in defensive field goal percentage. Both teams can deny the rim with effective shot blocking. Really hard to score against both these ball clubs. These players for Temple, though, Mark, have stepped it up all at various times, right, to help them and to continue what they've done this year to be in the top four right now in the American. I mean, here's a three ball, and this is one of them, Hasir Miller, true freshman coming in and knocking down a big shot to tie the game. Well, Hasir Miller, one of those guys that's learned how to not make mistakes, just keep it simple. And you'll notice that when he gets open, he's got good balance, he's got good instincts, and he knocks down the shot. Really not good defense by DeAndre Williams, gave him that window for him to go right up and knock down that three ball. Miller's a nice young player. Coach McKee talked about these two stepping up, having to provide some support here for this group with all the injuries and everything that's happened. And Hicks and Miller, two freshmen, two true freshmen for Temple. The foul was on Nick Jordan for the Owls. That's his second, and he has left the floor. I want to get him picking up his third foul here early. He's been a huge part of this team. Turnaround fadeaway as the shot clock winds down by Quinones, and Temple has it. Well, the Memphis has improved so much offensively, just sharing the basketball and getting their bigs involved in every possession. A lot of touches on that possession for lots of Memphis players. That's what they need to do to win. Dunn trying to shake off the defense. Going to be a foul call. That's going to be on Landers Nolly, and that's going to be his second. And that takes us to a timeout. Four minutes gone by in the first half. Tom Jeremiah Williams come back and win it 64 to 57. You talked about Mark Aaron McKee being one of your potential coaches of the year award winners here in the American. I would say so after what he's done with this team and battling through all the injuries all season long. Well, strength in numbers, and that's one of the things that's happened with these Temple Houses. You see Ty Strickland right on cue scoring right there. And he went for 27 in that win against SMU. Now, early in the season, we wouldn't even see Ty Strickland. But he's gotten better and better and better. And a lot of guys are stepping up off what once was that Temple bench. And now they're primetime players. And Aaron McKee has juggled that roster in master play. How about the uh, name from Temple or from Tulane on there, Ron Hunter? Wow, what a season that the Green Wave is having, right? Yeah, Tulane has never finished better than seventh in the league. They've never had more than six wins in the American. They've got nine now in the American. Ron Hunter has just done a tremendous job. They haven't had a 500 season or better since the 2013-2014 season. And they're right there again, Mike. It's been an amazing run for Ron Hunter. 
in the Green Wave. Lost last night to Houston, but this is a team led by Jalen Cook that can really score. Duran scores to tie this game at eight. Yeah, for Tulane, nine wins. That's more than they've had in conference over the last three seasons. They had four, four, and then zero three years ago. That's the job that Ron Hunter's done with Tulane this year. He just brings so much energy to what was a dormant program, but not anymore. The Green Wave is back. They've got really good players with Cross, with Forbes, with Cook. And he's got three legit guys, go-to guys, in late-game situations. And now we're getting toward tournament time in the American. And right now, up oh, it started. Tulane would have a bye in the first round. That's how far this program has come from number 300 just three seasons ago. 300 right. in the country in the computer rankings. It's impressive. Foul was on Akpomo, his first for Temple. Pull it up and a shot is Durant. Ball trickles out to yet another offensive rebound here for Memphis as Alex Lomax has it. Now yeah, keep an eye on Josh Minot at the top of your screen, number 20. He's only a freshman. Very, very active on the offensive class. Plays his role, brings energy. How about that? That'll bring energy. Durant on the assist, uh, the assist from Tyler Harris. 10 to 8 Memphis. Yeah, Duran has learned how to let the game come to him. He doesn't force things as much now. He waits for the opportunity just like that last possession. Wow. White with the bucket. Yeah, Jaleel White. Second Another year with the team. Yeah. Oh, and right back again for the Tigers. Duran. So powerful inside. Well, Jalen Dern is an NBA talent. Why? Because he's got lower body and upper body strength, and he also has good quickness. That's a really strong spin move. He recognizes the mismatch and just overpowers the Temple defender. Well read by Jalen Dern has become more of a student of the game. Well, Akpomo picks up his second personal foul for Temple as all 12 of Memphis's points have come in the paint so far to start this game here. And he is just so improved. This last seven games, the light bulb went on as Penny Hardaway talked about the big fella, how he's putting in the work. He's getting better every day. He's learning how to be a professional. Yeah, Hardaway told us earlier today that, you know, he didn't think this team would be in this spot, right? I mean, it's been well documented throughout the year. We, there was a lot of expectations from Memphis State. He said, I figure we'd have two or three losses max, right? And he was very upfront about it, Mark. No consistency, chemistry, cohesiveness. I mean, he said it was embarrassing. But they have completely turned it around here and at the right time. But Mike, he blamed it all on himself. He didn't blame the players. He blamed himself. And that takes a fans building culture. Look, Memphis was a mess earlier this season. Everybody knows it. Penny talked about it. And it happened the season before as well. But Penny has now taken ownership in his own coaching. He looked in the mirror first. And I think that played really well in the locker room with this team. The foul is on White for Temple. And here's Minot. He's at the free throw line for the Tigers. Now, I love this kid's game. Just turned 18 years old. Raw talent, brings energy, plays his role. He's not a head case that needs the ball all the time. He's willing to play with four other guys every time he comes on the floor. And he's been a culture-building player for Penny Hardaway. Big, big future for Josh Minor. I think he's a pro when it's all said and done. I think he needs several years to climb college level. But I love the way that kid goes about his business. That's a good point, Mark. You know, sometimes if you come in, obviously very talented player. Look at this. Three ball goes in by Zach Hicks. You know, you might not have as much pressure on you like as some of the other players do, so it gives you a chance to kind of settle in a little bit. Like you said, you have high expectations for him, but maybe he doesn't have quite the same pressure as some of the other guys do. Well, he was way down Paul Biancardi's list. He was down in like the 70s, 80s as far as his high school reputation being ranked versus Dern and Bates, but for a long time, he was the best freshman on the floor for Memphis. Well, how about this Temple team? 
where they just continue to battle. Yep. That time saves Colbert inside. I mean, there's guys on the floor that we didn't see at all earlier in the season, and everybody's contributing now. What a job by everybody Aaron is. Everybody is. They can go 11 deep here in this game. You might even see it tonight. So far, 10 players have played for the Owls thus far. Tie game at 15. And that's intercepted. Jeremiah Williams has it. So Williams, a huge story here for the Owls as he did not play in the last couple games. The strong guard has been outstanding for them, but they've missed his presence, and now he's back and making some plays here for the Owls. Yeah, huge story. This is a Chicago kid that plays Chicago tough. I mean, he is a gamer. Number 25 for the Temple Owls. Keep an eye on Jeremiah Williams. I love this kid, too. I mean, there's just young talent everywhere for Temple. This is the future of our basketball right now. That ball was initially knocked away by Dunn on the steal that started that play, and we've got a timeout. Well, what a breath of fresh air to see Jeremiah Williams in uniform for injury against USF. Brian Gregory asked Aaron McKee about it during the handshake line. They were showing sportsmanship, by the way, which usually happens in every game, except for maybe one-tenth of one percent. But at any rate, Brian Gregory asked about Jeremiah Williams and how he was in there and said, I'm not real sure when he's going to be back. You should have seen the painful look on an opponent's coach face in Brian Gregory because he's such a good kid. He plays so hard, plays so hell, so well, and he's an integral part of this Temple basketball team. Well, that's Walt said, Mark. I mean, he was averaging a good 35 minutes a ball game and a good 13, 14 points a game uh, prior you know, to when he got hurt. He's having a really good stretch there. Well, he played in 12 minutes in the USF game, like you said. Down there taking on the Bulls and then missed the last three. He's back. That's an offensive foul. Caught on Memphis and Williams. That is his second. Yeah, Sage Tolbert just, just stood his ground right here. But see, that's Jaleel White that just stood his ground. There you see DeAndre Williams. He comes through and extends that forearm. Really good call by the official. Great defense by White. All right, what do you think here now? You got Nolly with two, you got Williams with two. Quinones has one for the Tigers here in this first half. And we played just under nine minutes. On the drive is White. Knocked out of his hands, it's off a of Temple. You know, I like the fact that Temple's in attack mode, but right there, White goes into four jerseys. I and mean, at some point, you got to go two foot jump stop and find an open player. And that was a freshman that just made a really bad decision on offense. One more foul, by the way, for Temple. And Memphis is in the bonus here. We still have almost 11 minutes to play in this first frame. Here's Harris. Trying to go inside. And a four-speed pass by Minot's intercepted. Temple's got it. There's Williams. Gets through the lane. Knocked out. And again, Memphis possession here on the strip. The last touch by Williams. Now I want you to watch Temple and watch their defenders. Don't watch the ball. Watch the backside and watch how often they communicate with each other. There's constant communication on the backside as they point, they talk, they, they, they rotate. Really good well, you see it There's right that there. rotation right there. That's the communication. You're all over it there, Mark. Absolutely right. And it forces a turnover. And they've got it. Yeah, they really rotate well. They don't get outside the three-point line much. And that's why great defense right there leads to great offense. There's Jaleel White who knocks down the three ball. And is Aaron McKee getting everything out of this team? You bet he is. It's a 9-0 Temple run here, and the uh, basket is scored by Quinones from Memphis. A great cut by Quinones, but Jeremiah Williams just completely broke down defensively. It's a two-pointer for Temple, by the way, on the shot by White. Let's go back to it. Let's see that last play. Here you go, Mark. Yeah, really good cut. Williams just got... Get caught standing up right there. I think he's going to take a seat. I have to wonder what his conditioning is like after going through that injury. 
So it's 19-17 here, Temple by two. And it kind of goes back to what you were just talking about, right, on the defensive end there, Mark, and breaking down what Temple does and their effective communication of why they are in most every single game they play and why they've got so many quality wins this season now in the American here in fourth place at 8-5. and five. And Three times now Temple tried to put the ball on the floor and get to the rim, and Memphis just reacts so well to the dribble. Third turnover, and like you said, all in plays like that and getting to the basket and them losing it out of bounds. Under nine minutes to go first half. Ball knocked out of the hands of Chandler Lawson, and it's going to be Temple possession. That's Zach Hicks over there. Now Memphis known for assists and also known for, that's just a fact. There's the dimes and debts right there. You love dimes, but sometimes dimes don't add up to pay off your debts. They certainly don't for me. This is a team that can assist it at 16.2 assists per game. But look at the turnover. Nearly 17 per game. That's 348 in the country. There's only 356 teams. That's how bad Memphis has been to the basketball. Here's the jumper by Hicks. That's no good. Rebound pulled home by Durant. Inside turn, he got it stripped. And Miller on the down. take. This is where Jalen Dern has to get better on the offensive end. Watch as he catches it. Watch him bring it down. See how low he brings it? He brings it down to his thighs right there, which means, you know, Munchkins can go and get the basketball. He brings it down. I mean... Como end up blocking it with his thigh, with his knee. Yeah. Acoma, excuse me. Harris is calling a foul for Temple, and here is, or for, excuse me, for Memphis, as Asir Miller is at the line. For a player of the year in the state of Pennsylvania last year, true freshman at a Newman Goretti, Philadelphia. One of two true freshmen along with Zach Hicks. I mean, it's a yeah, young Temple team. Uh, time in about three games. He got about nine minutes a game. So he's going from backup roll to prime time roll in a hurry. It's an 11 2 Temple run here as they lead it by four. Eight minutes to play first half from Memphis. It's such a critical game for Temple. They can maintain a spot in the top five where you get a bye into the American Athletic Conference Tournament. And for Memphis, squarely on the bubble right now. Well, you talked about it at the start as Timberlake misses and the Owls run the other way. Three on two. And a nice finish that time from Ty Strickland. Damian Dunn looked the opposite way and then delivered. Smart basketball by Damian Dunn. And Memphis here is done a little bit right now. Yeah, fourth shot early in the possession. Six points, I believe, with the ball. Done. Nice. Mark. Tyler Harris is matched up with Damian Dunn. That's a size mismatch. Dunn can score whenever he wants to. He can just see over Tyler Harris and make a shot. Temple Owls getting contribution right now as he's working with the Hall of Fame coach Larry Brown. I mean, this is like an unfair advantage. All you ever want in coaching is an unfair advantage. Well, if you're going to go to the league, you want an unfair advantage too. And Larry yeah. Brown, the Hall of Fame coach on Penny Hardaway's bench, as you see him there, a little bit of a teaching moment with DeAndre Williams. I mean, that is an unfair advantage to get this big guy more active and better fundamentally on the offensive end. Asked Petty Hardaway about that earlier today, his assistants and Cody Toppert and Larry Brown, who you're talking about, and Rasheed Wallace. You know, a pretty darn good group there of, you know, mixing talent and experience and uh, relating to the players. I mean, it's just pretty darn good. You know, and I think that they're really starting to get it, you know, now. And as you heard 
Petty tell us earlier today about the buy-in. Yeah, it's, it's it's different for everyone, right? When they say the players have bought in, well, they're starting to do that now here for the Tigers as Durant is at the free throw line for two. Yeah, Larry Brown brings that uber knowledge and experience that Penny Hardaway is very familiar with. When Penny Hardaway was a high school coach, guess what? He had a direct line to Larry Brown. How many high school coaches in the country can call Larry Brown? And there you see the two working together in tandem. One of the things that Larry Brown does the, a really good job of is bringing real world experience and knowledge and he's got Penny's ear and Penny is, is now absorbing that he's wanting to get better he's wanting to learn because remember Penny came from the high school level and jumped to the college level I think this season has been a great learning opportunity for Penny Hardaway and I've seen growth well, that's what he's told us as well and his assistants have helped out a lot but he said hey whatever you need coach you know to help you grow and that's what's happening Here's the three ball on the way by Dunn. It's off and right into the hands of Quinones. Hardaway. Whistle before that. It's Jaded Hardaway. Watch how Jaden Hardaway turns away from the, from the contact. We can turn all the way. You can, read the, you can read the front of his jersey right there. He's got to learn to want the contact. We should see the front of his jersey going right to the basket, to the rim, instead of fading away from that contact. Third foul for Emmanuel Ocpomo, who is going to head to the bench. And that's only the seventh game of the season for Ocpomo. Played a total of 29 minutes before tonight's game. So they got him in there early, and now he's out. A couple of West Coast college basketball games in the spotlight. Coming up next over on ESPN. On ESPN2, we got Gonzaga and San Francisco on the road. And then at 9.30 Eastern over on ESPN, UCLA taking on Oregon. That should be a great one as well. Games are also streaming live in the ESPN app. And we're here on this Thursday night. So you're telling me we got a double dose of Drew Timmy for Gonzaga and Johnny Juzang for UCLA? There you go. Oh, about that. we got two screens going for that. Four-point lead for the Owls. Eight to shoot here for the Tigers. I've just really been Four. impressed with the rotation of the Temple defense. They're always in position. They're always mm -hmm. communicating. The thing I like best, Mike, they're always in a stance. I just like the fact they're always in a stance. Yeah, good positioning here. Let's see what happens on this jumper. No good. Rebound. Pulled home as Nolly misses. Hicks has it. Good confidence here for the Owls. Up four on the road. Against the Memphis team that's won six of the last seven. There's number 25, Jeremiah Williams, who's back in the lineup. We're getting players back. Shot clock done. Kicks it. Miller. Now it's Hicks. Fight for the offensive rebound. Parks has it, and he's fouled. What a job by Arashma Parks to grab the sophomore for Temple. Yeah, Arashma Parks, he gets offensive rebounding position early against Durham right here and goes up with two hands. See how Durham goes up with only one hand? That's a man's rebound there by Arashma Parks. Durham picks up his first personal foul. 18 fouls on Memphis in this first half. Eight on Temple as well. Here's Parks. Averaging about 12 minutes a game. The 16th game of the season. Played about two-thirds of the contest here for Temple. Offensive rebound. Done. Now Williams has it. And how does Dunn go and get an offensive rebound off of a missed free throw against the front line of Memphis? I mean, that's just not being ready. Okay, you can't have that, right? Here's the jumper that's up and in as the shot clock is winding down by White. Six point Temple lead. Well, what a job Aaron McKee has done. I mean, they just keep bringing basketball players off the bench. It's like a revolving door of guys that we haven't seen a whole lot this season. And all they do is make plays. 
Revolving door, next guy, make a play. Revolving door, next right. guy, make a play. I feel like I'm in New York City in a big old high rise. Just keep <laughs> spitting out basketball players. Ten players have played tonight. Eight of the ten have scored. Nobody has more than six points for Temple, and they lead it by six. And they are hard. 11 for Duren from Memphis. Down the lane. Runners good by Williams. With DeAndre Williams, he just changes the enthusiasm factor for this Memphis team. When he's out there, their body language changes. He's always in attack mode. Fourth point of the night for him. Here's a steal. Darren Melt, offensive rebound, Kinyotis. Back to Tony's foul. Look how athletic Jalen Dern is. I mean, he just jumps the route here. It's like an NBA safety that just goes right in. Now, this is pretty interesting right here. He doesn't want to get a charge, so he goes in soft with it. If he if he attacks that right hand side and gets a two foot jump stop, he can go up and dunk it on somebody. Foul's caught on Hicks. For Temple. Such a big game for Memphis. I mean, this is a team that really needs a win right now. They got hot. SMU beat them at SMU. In fact, SMU swept Memphis this season. Tim Jenkins yep. done a tremendous job, too, with those Mustangs. And now Memphis needs to prove they can come back because they've been on a roller coaster ride throughout the season. Coming up Saturday, six-pack of college hoops on ESPN. Tips off of the great Big Ten matchup. we got number four, Purdue. Taking on Michigan State. It's on ESPN. Noon Eastern, 11 Central, right after college game day. And, of course, on the ESPN app. How about the list of teams this year, Mark, in terms of, like, who could potentially win a national championship? Where do you have Purdue kind of in that mix, uh, the way they've been playing this year? Well, I'm a, I'm a big Matt Painter fan. Matt was actually an assistant in Eastern Illinois, believe it or not, and Rick Samuels, and I was the head coach at Central Connecticut. We were in the same league, and so... I followed Matt throughout his career. He's one of the really class guys. He's got he's got bigs. He's he's got perimeter guys. I mean, I think Purdue is built for a final four run. I'll tell you the other team that I think is the toughest team, along with Houston in the country, that has real final four abilities, and that's Texas Tech. And not because Mark Adams coaches yep. that team. I get confused every time I watch a <laughs> Texas Tech game. But I gotta tell you, that guy can coach and that team plays just Texas Tech tough. Three ball done. And rebounded by Memphis and Quinones. They can tie or take the lead to the three here. Three and a half to go. First half. Tie game. Thanks to DeAndre Williams. DeAndre Williams just doesn't settle. Defensively. But you can isolate him defensively and pick on him. And I'd look for San Francisco to try to do just that tonight. To try to attack through Timmy because... One, he has a difficult time guarding the ball. And number two, you get him in foul trouble. We're tied at 27 here tonight with three minutes and 20 seconds to play in the first half. Temple's Williams takes it over to Miller, brings it over just in time. What are you thinking here on the offensive end here for the Owls in this set? Uh, I'm thinking this team reminds me of the John Cheney coach teams. The Fran Dunphy coach team. They take care of the ball. They're smart about their decisions. They're hard to guard because they got five guys that can make shots. And there's an example right there again. Jaleel White from downtown. Mike, I'm really impressed with this basketball team. I've watched them a couple times on television recently and really like the way they play. But just the level of depth that Aaron McKee can use now with this team, how they've developed this team, we're seeing it all come to fruition here tonight at Memphis. We are. White's got nine points. He's four of five from the field. Missed shot there by Williams. Temple's got it. I guess probably because they're just not so flashy. Right, Mark? I mean, they're not going to go exactly top 80 right. points a game. They grind you out. They play defense. I mean, they're probably one of the best teams in this conference that does not get the respect that I think everybody else has seemed to be getting. When you played against the John Cheney team, you'd sit there and, and, and watch the Aaron McKees of the world play, and you'd say, look, these guys are really, really good, but what you notice more, they're really, really tough. 
And that toughness travels. Defense travels. Rebounding travels. And Aaron McKee has had a tough life as a young person when his dad basically was out of his life. He's had mentors that have brought him along. And Aaron McKee is the embodiment of the community, the basketball community of Philadelphia. And John Chaney, the legend right there, who is one of Aaron McKee's mentors, would just grind you down. I called a Temple game against National Rank Maryland after they won the national championship. And Temple ended up winning that game, and everybody stormed the floor. And I remember visiting with Coach Chaney after that game. And I've never met a coach that was more focused on giving credit to his players but challenging them every single morning, early in the morning, to be Philadelphia tough. And that's what Aaron McKee has done with this program. I admire what he's doing. Yeah, I loved watching those teams back in the day with Cheney. He passed away last January, January 29th, 2021, 89 years old. He was a classic. Yeah. So he, when Dayton came into the A-10, Mike, John Chaney came out and said he didn't want to go out to the sticks to play a basketball game. So he had to come to Dayton. So he showed up at Dayton with a straw hat on, on the floor. And the, and the, the crowd loved it. They adored John Chaney. He turned a negative into a positive by wearing a farmer's straw hat on the floor at the <laughs> Arena, otherwise known as the Dayton Decibel Dungeon. <laughs> What would happen now if somebody tried to do that? Probably one of the best <laughs> atmospheres and places to play in college basketball at UD Arena there in Dayton. Three-point lead. Watch how Temple probes. There's Jeremiah Williams right there. Defender ends up going underneath the screen, so he steps back. It doesn't make the shot, but it was the right read on that situation. It's a high IQ basketball team. It's a foul on Temple. Watch Jeremiah Williams. He reads the defender. Tyler Harris goes under the screen. He's got all kinds of space to knock down that three ball. Okay, shot doesn't go in, but as a coach, you say, that's a great read. You get open like that again, son. You shoot it. Excellent job, as you said. Parks was called a foul for Temple. So here's Durant. Double bonus time here for the Tigers. Saturday, full day of college hoops we've got for you on ESPN. Starts at 4 o'clock here. This one, Auburn and Tennessee. That should be awesome. That's coming your way. Then we have Duke in action against Syracuse. That's at 6 o'clock on ESPN. And then at 8, cent 8, 7 Central, Baylor and number 5, Kansas. How big is this game? It's Saturday prime time. Presented by H&R Block coming your way this weekend. That game should be awesome. Well, injuries part of that equation for Baylor certainly, but Kansas has been so good this season. Under a minute to go in the first half. Temple hanging on to a one-point lead. Williams breaks free. Double clutch not there. Still loose. Williams goes after, deflects it, and Dunn has it. Shot clock reset the twenty. The loose ball. Air ball by Williams, and here is Nolly from Memphis. Ahead of the pack, look out, Durant. Parks got hit in the face at the end of that play. And lots of loose balls here, and somehow, look at yeah. Durant. He's last. Okay, he's last as Parks get hit in the face right there. But he's last in the full court situation. But you know what? He ends up first. Look at that. He sprinted all the way down the floor. There are big guys that can run and big guys that can flat out sprint. Jalen Dern went from last to first off that loose ball to a dunk on the opposite end. That's a one-two thing by Jalen Dern. He's been dominant tonight, 17 of the 33 points for Memphis. Under 20 seconds left. Temple down one. Now Damian Dunn has never been shy about taking shots during big times, and Ty Strickland out there as well. Inside, 
Messine getting it back and putting it up is Hasir Miller, and that's going to be the end of the first half. And Memphis has a one-point lead at the break. They've led by as many as five, but that's a lot of players. They played ten guys in this game, Temple has, and eight of them have scored. And a lot of points coming in the paint early on. That's what Memphis was doing. They've hit a couple of outside shots. They're 0 for 4 from three-point range, and Temple is 3 of 13 from the outside. Second half underway here tonight. Mike, Joe Lenardi at halftime talked about the importance of this game for Memphis. And they've been swept by SMU. They need this win badly. They knocked off Houston at Houston. And this is a good Temple team, but it's a quad three opportunity for Memphis. It is back to the wall. Memphis has to show up here in the second half to be considered that large team. Yeah, they are right there right now. You talk about SMU, the last four in, Memphis in the first four out. Houston, of course, in the field, the way they played this season. And this is crucial here tonight. And Memphis will host Wichita State on Sunday. Close out this week. On the drive for the bucket. Count it from Miller. And Temple playing for one of those top five spots in the American because you get a bye. Bottom six teams play. The top five teams get a bye into the quarterfinals. So critical game for Temple as well. Oh, down the basket. And Williams scores it. Yeah, DeAndre Williams was in foul trouble in the first half. He needs to stay out of foul trouble because he can make plays like this. When he and Durant are both on the floor, that's the best one-two punch in the post in the American. Ten points for Williams in this game. Five of seven from the field. And Memphis leads it by two. Memphis wants to speed you up. They want to pressure you. They want to get turnovers. They want to speed you up. Temple's done a really good job of keeping the ball and their offense spread and taking what the defense gives them. Well, they have, Mark. They've only had five turnovers in this game, and three of those five have been on aggressive drives to the basket, and they just kind of knocked out of their hands and, and touched them last out of bounds. So not a ton of unforced errors. That's a traveling violation by uh, Lomax. Well, that's just an unforced air. It drives Penny Hardaway crazy. On the other side, turnover-wise, nine for Memphis in this game. Well, we talked about dimes and depths. And this team is nearly 350 in the country in turnovers per game. There's another turnover well, right there. Yeah, and you get a steal, and then you give it right back. Well, and Alex Lomax, this isn't his first rodeo. He's been around a while, and when Alex Lomax keeps things simple and just hits singles, he's effective as a point guard. Not dominating, but effective as a point guard. But when he tries to hit home runs, that's when he gets in trouble. Temple possession down by two. Here's Nick Jordan, and he is fouled. He had two fouls early in this contest, and he had a set. So we have not seen much from Jordan here in this game tonight. He's only played in five minutes. And that foul's on DeAndre Williams. And that's his third. He sat a lot in the first half right there. You know what, you can discuss it, debate it all you want, but yeah. that's three fouls, and that's a problem for Memphis. Jordan is a little bit of everything for this Temple team. Second year with the team now. As you look down the list, Mark, you see seven, well, I should say eight listed freshmen, although the only yeah. true freshmen are Haseel Miller and Zach Hicks. So everybody else is on that second year, if you will, from the COVID year. But still, very, very, very young Temple team. You know, Mike, when Jake Forster went down, I wanted to go, okay, who are they going to go to now? 
And then Nick Jordan starts putting up numbers after numbers after numbers. Been very impressive for a guy that was just another guy for Aaron McKee again, stepping up in prime time, making big time plays for the Owls of Temple. Memphis, they left Williams in there with the three personal fouls. Here's a three ball from Quinones, not there. Williams able to track it down, and he is fouled. Going to call it undone. One thing about DeAndre Williams, something's always happening around him. <laughs> he just, he's like a man. <laughs> Between the ball, opposing players, fouls, big-time shots, something's always going on around DeAndre Williams. How about down low with Duren as well? They're, they're battling there underneath. That's uh, Parks. He's got his hands all over Duren. He's going to be called for the foul. That's the second on Arashima Parks. What do I got to do? It's a tough cover. It is a tough cover. Mm -hmm. Duren is so big, so strong, so athletic, so quick. You've got to beat him to the spot. You get in a wrestling match down low and he gets positioned. That's going to turn into a dunk. I mean, 6'11", 250. Yeah, in terms of size, it's like pro-ready, of course. Another foul here. It's undone again. That's a second. Fourth Temple team foul already here in the second half, and Dunn's going to go out. Once upon a time, that was a problem for the guys. Not so much anymore. This shot there, Williams. Oh, got to be careful not to pick up his fourth and comes down to Strickland. I'd go right at DeAndre Williams. I'd go right at him. Yeah, I'm with you. And the Strickland takes it in against Duran, and he scores. So Strickland picks up his sixth point of the night. Temple's back in front. Three minutes gone by second half. Boy, Strickland just so improved throughout this season. Dropped 27 on the win against SMU. Yeah, 11 points in the last game. 38 in the last two. Now, Ty Strickland really has a really good explosive first up. Once he turns the corner, and he's not afraid to take the bump. That's what I saw in the SMU game. where He'll, he'll go right to the big guy's sternum and then just deliver the blow and take it off the glass with touch. His last two games, about that career he's high. really good. Certainly has transfer out of Wisconsin. Originally from Tampa, Florida. Six tonight, three or four from the field for him. Now again on the drive, and he's blocked from behind. And that was by Williams, and he saves it from going out. And now a three ball for the lead back. Count it for Memphis. It all starts with DeAndre Williams. When he gets it going and he's got energy, he brings energy to everybody else. Kenyonis to make it a two-point Memphis lead. He's got seven points. Going to be a foul here on Lomax. Third Memphis team foul in the second half. Already had seven fouls called here by both teams combined in the first four minutes of the second frame. Tyler Harris is back in for the Tigers. Three ball here, Strickland. No, rebound, Kenyonis. Aliyuk, Jared from Harris. Well read by Tyler Harris. He saw the bigs come up to guard him, and he knew right away, just throw it up to the rim. The big fella will knock it down. Jalen Dern, what an athlete. Two assists by Harris, both on alley -oop slams by Dern. Now Miller takes it in. Wow, Hasir Miller, the true freshman for Temple, and we're at a two-point game. And he made Landers Nolly look like he was standing still right there. Miller just explosive to the rim. 
How about he leads Temple in scoring tonight, Mark? 11 points from Miller, 3 of 5 from the field. Right back the other way to Nolly. Well, Nolly didn't have, hang his head for long, did he? Just responded. The court pressure. Take away. And out of bounds is Harris. And we've got a timeout. We're right off the field street, and it showed points per game. And this is an offensive juggernaut led by Drew Timmy. There you see his numbers, but this is a hard to guard Don Zaga team that's going to make another run to the Final Four. We know how awesome Mark View has been, and uh, the same can be said about Mick Cronin. Mark, I know you're right down the road there from Cincinnati, where he was previously. Look at the job that he's doing at UCLA. Uh, that, that's a very dangerous team uh, come tournament time, both of them. Yeah, Johnny Juzang plays with such premier confidence. And he's the perfect fit for Mick Cronin. Turnaround fadeaway, counted for Zach Hicks. Yeah, that is a tough, tough shot. Early on, the speed of the game was affecting him. He wasn't making good decisions and really didn't show the ability to play at this level this early in his career. Well, Zach Hicks has fixed that. He really has five points tonight. Two of seven from the field. Oh, then they get a steal. And that is Hicks taking it away that time for the 12th turnover of the Tigers in this game thus far. All right, there's that backside defense that's always in position and always has vision. A white that time missing on the shot would have tied it up. Now Memphis and Harris. Harris gets it back. Three ball. Great look, and he trades it, and he's fouled. Parks hit him at the end, and a chance for a four-point play. Now, Arashma Parks, watch the angle that he takes. He goes right at the shooter, jumps right into him. That's a horrible angle to challenge the shot. I mean, that was a direct line into the shooter. You've got to pick the downside shoulder, that baseline shoulder, and pick that angle past the shooter. You can still challenge the shot, but you can't take a straight line to the shooter. That's a three-point shot foul waiting to happen. That's a huge sequence right there. Memphis has been outstanding at the free throw line tonight, as you've seen. Chance to go 13 to 14, and they do. And it's the largest lead for Memphis tonight. Six points. Harris knocking down a four-point play for his first points of the night. And now you need composure if you're Temple. Take your time. Spread them out. Canionis called for his third personal foul. Mark, I don't feel like anything is going to rattle this Temple team this year. On that game on Wednesday last week, they were down for the most part of the entire game. Seven, eight points, eight, seven, six, seven. And he just kept going back and forth. They never let SMU get up in that double-figure category, and then they just windled it down, ended up winning by eight. Three ball hicks, and he responds. Big shot there. Well, they've got a little bit of that Houston gene in them, don't they? Where they, they just don't give up. They play very, very Philadelphia tough basketball. This team's going to be a tough out in the American. And this would be a dark horse team for the American Athletic Conference Championship. Well, if they win tonight, they go into third place and they flop spots with Memphis. Second place is SMU. Houston in the top spot. I agree with you. Well, if you're a Temple fan, you've got to be excited about the present and the future with this team. Still a very young team. But, man, Eric McKee's got weapons. And they're learning how to use them. Well, big addition uh, tonight with the return of Jeremiah Williams. They needed that. They missed the last three games. He's not out there right now, but did get some run in the first half. Played 15 minutes. Turnaround jumper by Turin. Boy, what can he do? And he continues to impress. He's got 21 points. And that was from the tutelage of Larry Brown. That shot right there was, was classic Larry Brown coaching. 
This kid just keeps getting better. He's a sponge. He's learning from the Hall of Fame coach. Here's a steal and a foul. Dunn is called for the foul as Quinones got it. Third foul and Dunn. Look at Jalen Dern right here. He catches the ball. He's balanced. A little inside pivot right there. Now, for all you old school basketball fans out there, remember a guy by the name of Jack Sigma. He used that inside pivot yeah. to create space for himself. So he'd get that jump, jump shot off. Jalen Dern, that's old school basketball. I wonder where he learned that from. I'm not saying Larry's old. Well, maybe. <laughs> but Larry Brown can still flat out coach. That's a good one, Mark. Haven't heard of Jack Sigma in a long time. Pretty good reference, though. I like that. Look it up, kids. Look it up. Yeah. They He's like the, the first big guy, Mike, to use right. that that inside pivot like that. And it became really popular, but he was one of the first guys to do it at the NBA level. And that guy, Coach. I ran into him in a 7-Eleven in Dallas one day. He, he, you know, he, he was done at SMU. I'm going to do an SMU game. I'm going in to get out on a Mountain Dew or something, something unhealthy, I'm sure. And, right. and I turn around, there's Larry Brown. I you know, got a chance to visit with him a little bit, really enjoyed it. I mean, how often do you run into a Hall of Fame coach in, in a 7-Eleven? In, in Actually, same thing right. happened with Luke Lute Olsen, too. I met him at a 7-Eleven also in Tucson, Arizona with his granddaughter. I guess it happened twice. Lightning All these legends go to 7-Elevens? Is that, is that what it is? <laughs> Hey, I wasn't picking up a six-pack of beer. I know that. No. <laughs> it was morning time. Okay. Williams gets it stripped away. Gets into the hands of Hicks, and he fires for three. No good. And Duran's got a nice outlet quickly to Williams. And that's right into traffic, and it's taken away by Temple. And a foul is going to be called on Duran. That's going to be his second. Time out of Memphis, 11.42 to play in this contest. Cross State fans come to Fort Worth, trust me. I mean, I'd love to see that rematch of Wichita State and Houston if Wichita State can get past Jared Dooley in East Carolina, which is not going to be easy. Tristan Newton, those guys are pretty good. That was my most favorite game of the year this year, Mark, that one we did last Sunday with Houston and that double overtime win at Wichita State. Easily, you know, one of the best atmospheres in college basketball. I know you've done many games there. You know, just the competitiveness of both teams is just off the charts. Landers Nolly from two. Nolly makes it a nine point lead here, 53 to 44, as we come up on 11 minutes to play in this game tonight. Memphis shooting 70% from the field in the second half, 7 to 10, and Temple responding. I mean, they're 6 of 11 so far in the field in the second half, and 55% as Miller converts. Mike, you brought it up a bunch of times with Temple how they were behind against SMU. They just kept hanging around, hanging around, and then made a run over the last three minutes of that game and stunned the Mustangs up in Philadelphia. Let's go back to Miller's shot. He's got 13 points here tonight, Mark. Yeah, these freshmen have just been so, so under control. Very judicious about the shots they take. They're always under control. I love the way this kid plays, and I love his physical strength at this point in his career. And can you project him out to be a senior? How strong that upper body's going to be? Well, that's the thing. You know, it, the, the development of these players, right? You know, Mark, and you said it, and you always have to ask the question now, you know, of like, well, if they all come back and this guy returns and all that stuff, I mean, it's just so much today with the portal and all that, but you you would hope to think some guys kind of settle in and, and grow as players year after year under the same coach and system. And you hope that's true, Tucker. And the way these guys play together and the culture that Aaron McKee has built. And Aaron McKee breeds loyalty. Whenever I talk to him, I just want to get out and play. And play hard. Mm -hmm. Foul is called here.
you just look at the strength. You, that, that's where Temple's guards, when they attack, they, they get low to the ground, and that's, that's Jaleel White, another freshman that really leverages his lower body to his upper body strength and then just drives to the rim so hard and draws contact. Fouls on Duran. That is his third. Three fouls on Lomax and three on Williams as well. Duran's going to head to the bench. White's a guy that had knee surgery last year, off-season surgery. Good defender, second year with the team. Everybody just seems to contribute here for Temple. You said it, Mark. This is far from over. It's a seven-point game. Still half of this second half to go. Such a big game for both these teams. Memphis on the bubble. Joe Lenardi watching as we speak down in the in the bubble bump bunker, right? The Lenardi bunker. bubble bunker. Yeah. <laughs> it's down by the beach. Here's Lenardi and his projections here for the American, Houston, SMU, Memphis. That's where the Tigers are at right now. First four out. On the drive, Strickle, and it's blocked inside by Quinones. Here's Lomax battling against Miller. Rebound White. Got into no man's land there. Didn't really have an option. White kicks it. Wide open is Hicks for three. They needed that. This is the largest lead of the game tonight from Memphis at 10 points. Temple has led by as many as eight. That was back with 7.13 to go in the first half, though. 25-17 early on. Well, can Memphis close it out and win a grind-it-out game? Because Temple's going to make you grind it out. Here's some deep. Bingo! Another huge shot for the Tigers. All of a sudden, they are finding their range from three-point land. Sixers. Great shot there. So, Mike, on April 3rd of 2002... The Philadelphia 76ers beat the Phoenix Suns 89-83. Penny Hardaway in that game had zero points. Aaron McKee of the Philadelphia 76ers had 22 points in that victory for the 76ers. You know what? In the handshake line after the game, if I'm Aaron McKee, I'm going to tell Penny Hardaway about that game on April 3rd, 2002. <laughs> so, so you're saying Penny needs some redemption here tonight. Yep. He's like... Gotta get back at this guy. Well, they got him by 13 right now. As we come up on eight minutes to go in this contest, another foul. A ton of fouls in this game. It's on Harris. 15 fouls already total in the second half. 8 on 9 to go. Everybody's in the bonus. Hang on tight. have to ask Penny about that game next time we visit. Maybe you better to ask Aaron about that game next time we visit. Yeah. I don't know if Penny would want to be reminded of that. <laughs> There's Williams. Well, what a player, though. I mean, these two guys both. Of course, Penny, one of the great brand names in the history of, college, of, of right. NBA basketball, and Aaron McKee. Just played hard. Played for John Channing for those great Temple teams. Went the Elite Eight. Just Aaron McKee tough, and this team plays tough. Spinning away from traffic there is Lomax. He gets it over to Nolly, and he trades another three. What is happening with Memphis in the second half? They have no three-pointers in the first half, and they're five of seven from three-point range here in the second frame. Yeah, Landers Nolly over the last three games has shot 58% from behind the arc. His head's right now. 
Landers Nolly has been engaged. He understands his role. He's been playing hard. I love what that kid's doing. Runner by Damian Dunn. He's fouled. And we've got a timeout. Landers way from Oregon. Take it on UCLA on ESPN 930 Eastern. Can't wait for that for Johnny Juzang and crew. Back to the guys. Another big game in the bubble. All right, thanks a lot, uh, gentlemen. Yeah, we got some really good games coming up here tonight, Mark. Uh, after us on ESPN and ESPN2, it should be fun. Always love watching UCLA and Mitch Cronin. Leaving my alma mater, Cincinnati, to go play, go coach the UCLA Bruins, and obviously Final Four last year. Johnny Juzang, a lot of fun to watch that team. They compete. It's coming up tonight. There's a foul as Lomax will head to the free throw line from Memphis. You know, Mike, here we are, February 24th. Houston, obviously, an NCAA tournament team. I think probably a top four seed team. And then you've got SMU and Memphis, who are both right there. Now, Joe Lenardi, I think, does a great job. And, and think about this, if you're a fan of, of any of these teams. In a perfect world, that means that right now, if, if Murray State... If they won their conference tournament, that's a good thing for SMU and Memphis. Yeah. But what if Murray State doesn't win the OVC? And that tournament can be nutso in Evansville, Indiana. You know, what if Gonzaga doesn't win the West Coast Conference and somebody like Santa Clara does? Other than, than maybe somebody like, you know, San Francisco. Right. When, when you start looking up and down of Davidson in the Atlantic 10, another great example. If Davidson doesn't win the A-10, then that's when you're really in trouble, when you're this close to the bubble, like Joe Lenardi just, just described for us tonight as to where these teams all sit. Well, the first couple that you were talking about there, those scenarios, that's what we call the uh, the bid stealers, uh, right, Mark? You know, come tournament time, so you're absolutely right. And then you just saw the kind of the line here of uh, demarcation for this uh, matchup here, or in the American, I should say, SMU uh, right there as the last four in and literally right next is memphis as part of the first four out uh, so that's how close they are and why they need to keep winning ball games here especially down the stretch they're up to a 16 point lead now though and we just saw earlier that damian dunn is fouled out so he was the one that was called the foul moments ago so no more damian dunn for the rest of this one for temple and williams at the line for another free throw you know, Mike, Memphis 3-3 three and three against quad one teams. That's good. It's really good. Yep. It's going to catch the eye of the committee, but then you go 5-2 and two against against quad three teams. I mean, quad one, 3-3. Three and three. So that, that's really good for Memphis. A team that intrigues me is the Dayton Flyers. And the Dayton Flyers, they're the second youngest team in the country. They opened up the season 1-3. and three. But Right now, they've got a net of 44. In Q1, they're 2-2. Two and two. And in Q2, they're 5-3. and three. But they lost three Q4 games. But the Dayton Flyers, for my money, for the youth of that team and how they bounce back after that one and three start, right. I think they're an NCAA tournament team. I think they're a really interesting, intriguing team. Yeah, freshman Deron Holmes, uh, freshman Malachi Smith, uh, the brother of uh, Dayton great Scucci Smith uh, back in the day. So they got some very talented players, and they're coming together. You're right. A couple of early losses, uh, teams that maybe should have beat, but you know, I, I said it before on earlier broadcasts is that, and agree with me if you can, Mark, or, or not, is that I just think it's so much harder to beat a really good team, you know, whether that's at home, on the road, or neutral, than it is to have a slip-up, right? To lose to somebody that, you know, you probably should beat. I think that kind of happens to everybody. I think there should be more credit given to beating really good teams. Well, and how do you respond to that slip-up? I mean, Dayton goes one and three, and then what do they do? They beat Miami, Florida. They beat Kansas, they beat Belmont, they beat Virginia Tech. That's how you respond. And that's why this game for Memphis is so important tonight. There's their net right there. Now, this will be a quad three game for Memphis right now with the metrics of Temple. But when you come off the loss to SMU, you've got to bounce back. And so far, Memphis certainly up by 17 right now. They're showing some grit tonight to put themselves in position to bounce back off that disappointing loss to SMU. Easy bucket there for Williams, and it's up to a 19-point lead here. It's six and a half to play in this contest tonight. 
Three ball. Miller. Nice shot. Boy, he's got 16 points. That stopped an 8 nothing Memphis run on that three ball. Now, the upside for Temple is significant. Caleb Battle not available since December. Jake Forrester went down basically around January 1st. Big guy that can score with his back to the basket. It was long. I mean, they lost two really good players. Then Williams went down with his shoulders for a while. Dunn didn't play against SMU. Four guys were out that game, and they figured out a way to win. This is a really talented young roster for Aaron McKee. White misses on the three. Harris is on the run, trying to take on all comers, and it stays in Memphis. 5.38 to play in the contest. Temple coming off the back-to-back -back wins. The win over SMU at home at Cincinnati this past weekend. They still have Tulane at Houston, Mark, and then USF remaining on the schedule for the Temple Owls before conference tournament time. Well, of course, this weekend, the biggest game in the conference all season long, SMU at Houston on Sunday. That's going to be a just a tremendous game. Of course, SMU beat Houston in Dallas as George W. Bush looked on, giving the W sign for the, for the win after the storm, <laughs> yeah. storming of the court. I don't think W is going to be there in Houston, I'm pretty sure. Right. A little bit of a good luck charm for Tim Jankovic's bunch, but that's going to be a heck of a basketball game. He'll be on Houston that one. Off. Tulane last night that. at Tulane. Yep. Memphis is on a stretch of three of the final four games of the regular season for them here at home. Three balls way off by Strickland. Stays at Temple. And Mike, in one of those games is Houston. So they already beat at Houston. Now they'll get a shot at them in Memphis. Here's the remaining schedule for Memphis. Which call states no Jimmy? Correct. That's what's coming up on Sunday. You've got that SMU Houston game. And I'll be in Memphis for the Wichita State contest and a doubleheader Sunday in the American on ESPN. Yeah, that'll be a, a, a great Sunday of basketball. My producer will be Joe McCoy. I'll be with Kevin Brown for that game and I'll tell you what, Joe McCoy knocked it dead with all the stuff we did at Wichita this weekend. Absolutely. Looking forward to working with that team. And, Mike, of course, we'll set you guys up then for, for Memphis versus Wichita State. Hey, no double overtime, okay? I want it on time. I, I can't guarantee that, Mike. I, I need my <laughs> I need my face time. And sometimes we have to go overtime to get that. So I can't guarantee that. Is that part of the contract? <laughs> yes, it is. The face time? Okay. Right. Got to have face time. <laughs> Back to Williams at the free throw line here from Memphis. Center five minutes to go. He's got 16 points tonight. Behind his teammate Dern, who's got 21. Career high for Dern is 22. That was back in November this year for the freshman. Well, we're starting to get some clarity as far as Memphis, SMU, and Houston are concerned. If Memphis can hold on to this win for the last 450 of this game, I think it's become pretty clear that the top three teams are most likely going to be Houston, SMU, and Memphis in some order. Not sure what that order is going to be yet. Nice drive in there that time from Hardaway. Does it go? Offensive rebound, Durant. Looking for a new career high. It's not there. Rebound to White. Mike, for the, for, the, for the American Tournament, Fort Worth coming up in a couple weeks. 
who would be your dark horse team? Who do you think would get hot and win this thing? So you can't pick Houston, can't pick Memphis, and can't pick SMU. Can't pick Houston, Memphis, or SMU. Okay. Well, we're talking a lot about this Temple team. I mean, I, I love the way that Tulane is playing, like you talked about with Ron Hunter, and it's a group that is having their best ever season in the American Athletic Conference. I mean, I'm sure they're I, – I'm going to take Tulane. I'll say that. What do you think of that pick? If I can't pick any of the top three. I'll my pick when we come back to break. How's that? Four and eight right now. Think if those games turned around, one possession here and there. They would be in the top five of this league. I'm picking as my dark horse the Shockers of Wichita State. Are there going to be now new T-shirts that say dark horse that all the Wichita State fans <laughs> are going to have in the stands? Like anything like you me. say, they they go after. Like it's amazing. We're in Wichita State this past weekend, and, and Mark had affectionately called the fans at Wichita State. He's been there numerous times, screaming idiots. And it was it was so funny. Now they all have screaming idiots T-shirts that they're selling to the fans out there. So you know yeah, the rest. I actually have one. There's a pre-order of like a hundred T-shirts already for the screaming idiots T-shirts. <laughs> And now there's going to be the shirts to say Dark Horse. They're going to have the Dark Horse yep. shirts on. They're going to bring in some prop to the roundhouse next game. Well, you look at you look at Craig Porter Jr., how he's developed for Wichita State. Ricky Council, the fourth, great offensive player. Tyson Etienne, who was the co-player of the year a year ago, preseason player of the year. I think it would be Kendrick Davis this year, by the way. You know, you've got Morris and Desai has been through the wars. Dexter Dennis been through the wars. And this team is going to get a new breath of life going into the American Athletic Conference Tournament. I just think there's ability there where they haven't won close games, plain and simple. But then you wipe the slate clean and you start figuring it out. If you can win your first round game and get some confidence, they can make a run. Mark, I agree with you. If anybody watched that game last Sunday that we did with Houston at Wichita State, they took up a double overtime, almost won that ball game. I think a lot of uh, people would agree with you as well. We shall see. Dern has tied his career high at 22 points, one of two at the line there. We've got three minutes to go. Don't forget, coming up after us here, we'll get you to Gonzaga in San Francisco. That big matchup. As soon as we are finished here in Memphis, Strickland for three, no good. Offensive rebound, Miller rejected by Dern. He blocked that with his, with his arm. <laughs> it's kept alive by Harris. Three ball, Quinones. And it for the follow was Williams as he flexes his muscles, and he's got 19. You know, what's impre impressive about tonight, Mike, is that there hasn't been any drama with Memphis. They're just grinding it out possession by possession. 16-point lead now. Listen, there was a time during the season where a 16-point lead wouldn't feel comfortable for Memphis. Tonight, it feels comfortable. Here's a step back three, and there's going to be a foul. I don't believe it's on the three-pointer, though. It's away from the ball. Penny Hardaway Penny has to feel really yeah. good about the way that his team has has bounced back. Disappointing loss. They you know, they got on a good run, and then lost one. Didn't play particularly well, especially in the second half. But good enough in the first half. And now to bounce back tonight against a good Temple team that's played as good a basketball as anybody around in the league over the last month, say, under Aaron McKee, this is a solid win for Memphis. Well, no doubt, take a look at what happened to them after the first few games of the season. They played some pretty good competition, and then, you know, there's a few losses in there, obviously, that you felt like, hey, you know, they could have had and should have had. And then, you know, you go through some of the conference play. And, and Mark, I, I mean, I think winning on the road, right? I don't I don't care who, you, who you're playing, especially in a tough league like this. It's tough. Yeah. Well, the good news for Memphis is now, they're going to play a boatload of home games coming down the stretch, including the last game of the regular season against Houston. 
Yeah, because two of their conference losses on the road at UCF and ECU, you felt like maybe you probably should have had those. But, again, that's tough. That was in that January stretch where they lost three in a row and then a loss to SMU. But then they, they picked it up. up. They yeah. didn't have their full roster. Williams was out. Dern was out. Jaden Hardaway was out. That's a three from Zach Hicks. And it's a 12-point game with a minute 42 remaining. We'll be right back. They have Dunn back in the lineup. They've got Williams back in the lineup tonight. No Jake Forrester still. We know that Caleb Battle's been out since the seventh game of the season. The number on the other side from Memphis. No Imani Bates tonight. The freshman. And it's been a huge night. For Duran, he's got 22. He's tied his career high. 19 for Williams, 12 for Nolly. They just got to wind down another minute 25 here to win their seventh out of eight games. But keep them in third place in the American. Here's the three ball. That's no good. Rebound by Hicks. Steal by Nolly. You know, Mike, who did Penny Hardaway talk about more than any other player today was Jalen Dern. And Jalen Dern has showed up. I've seen his work ethic. I've seen him putting in extra time. I've seen him maturing and asking questions and being more engaged in shoot-arounds. And now Jalen Dern is becoming the player that everybody thought that he could become. I mean, he is a dude inside that is playing hard and playing well. Yep. Just taking a little bit of time, that's all. Here's what we're featuring from the AAC on ESPN Plus. Saturday, Tulsa takes on ECU. That's at 4 o'clock Eastern. And then USF in Cincinnati. Squaring off against the Bearcats at 7 o'clock Eastern. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash AAC. Well, Temple losing tonight actually helps Cincinnati. And if they're going to get in one of those top five positions, they need some help. The Bearcats... Yeah. Right at that 500 mark. They need some help. Foul on the rebound. Everybody's coaching Josh Minot now. Here, boxing out. Yeah. Gonzaga, San Francisco coming up here shortly as soon as we are finished here in Memphis. 48.7 seconds to go. Pomo here for Temple is at the free throw line. Duran's night is done, as it should be. The 22 points, tying a career high for the Tigers. Mike, I'm getting texts from Gonzaga fans who want this game over now. <laughs> They're demanding <laughs> that this game. I'm not kidding you. I'm getting, really? getting texts from friends of mine. I coached for a long time on the West Coast. A lot of Gonzaga folks out there. Okay. They're texting me right now to shut up and get off the air. I don't know how to take that. And we're doing the best we can here. There's a lot of fouls in the second <laughs> half, obviously. <laughs> Great hands out in Spokane. Yep. Nice There's a thunderous dunk at the end from Minot. And the assistant Connor Glennon coming off the bench. Well, that's a great play by that kid. Walk on, makes a play. A lot of fun. Yeah, see, tell the fans not, not to yell at us. Uh, you know, again, more fouls at the end. It's one of my former players, Steve Casey, that played for me at Rocky Mountain College, and he's all over me. Right he's right. killing me. <laughs> White's at the line for one more. We found out that Memphis can win with grit tonight against yes. a mentally tough team, and Jalen Dern just came up huge. You should be smiling. Tremendous effort by Jalen Dern tonight. 
Tigers going to be winners of seven of the last eight. Going to go to 16 and 9, 10 and 5 in the American third place. Stay in that spot. With a win over Temple here tonight. 22 points by Durham. And the Tigers win it 78 to 64. That's all for us tonight. From Mark Adams, Mike Corey, thanks for watching. Now let's get you to Gonzaga and San Francisco. Dave Fleming and Sean Farnham. Guys.